throw in shocking news from the Baltimore Ravens. News that I know I sure ain't see coming, happening from 10 miles away. Not this early, but the Baltimore Ravens have officially, no rumors, no, oh, he say, she say. No, 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 no. The Baltimore Ravens have officially designated tight end Mark Andrews to return from injured reserve. Now, I remember a couple of weeks ago when... Uh, we talked about him being in the locker room and he ain't have no crutches on. We talked about how that was huge because that showed that he didn't need any help walking around and he didn't need any aid walking around. So that was a, a great development in itself. But this, that, that, that did show progress. And this, of course, shows the ultimate progress that the fact that he's practicing, he's been cleared to practice after that Bengals game, that Thursday night Bengals game where things look very, very murky. And with, with John Harbaugh, Shout out to John Harbaugh because he let us know from that night. He said Mark Andrews, uh, because again the reports when it, when it first the injury first happened after a little while, the reports were okay. Mark Andrews most likely is done for the season. But John Harbaugh came out and said there's an outside chance that he could return for the playoffs, and we always knew that that was significant because we know it. John Harbaugh, he, he usually don't say nothing like that. John Harbaugh will usually shut stuff down. If it's a season-ending injury, then, oh, yeah, it's a season-ending injury. But if we go back even further, he did the same thing with Ardarius Washington because if you're in, who just got designated to return two weeks ago. Because with Ardarius Washington, remember, he suffered the injury, and John Harbaugh said, well, his season is most likely over, but it's not necessarily over yet. We don't know yet. So he didn't end things. And, and, and look what happened with Ardarius Washington, too. So with Mark Andrews back in the fold, that is a beautiful thing because the Baltimore Ravens are a very strong team, extremely strong team. They got that much stronger. They got that much better. And Isaiah Likely, who has been going crazy for this past month and change, he's just been going off. He's been on a tear, making play after play after play after play. Dare I say... That if Isaiah Likely got opportunity like that, he'd be a top five tight end. And, and I don't even think that's a hot take. I don't even think that's even crazy to say because we see what he's been doing. Everything from two preseasons ago that we saw from Isaiah Likely is happening now on the field. But now, see, this is a, a tough task for Todd Munkin. But it's a great problem to have. It's, it's an amazing problem to have. Now, you have Isaiah Likely who's been balling who has been just amazing as a tight end, been making play after play after play after play after play. But now you have Mark Andrews, who you know is a top tight end in this league, a well-established top tight end in this league, and now he's back. Now the, the, the mission for Todd Munkin. Now, will it happen in the divisional game? You, it's obviously a chance because Mark Andrews is on the roster. And this, I believe, is the Baltimore Ravens, the last person that they can bring back from injury reserve. So there will be no more crazy announcements from people coming back from injury reserve because I believe you have eight spots where you could bring people back from injury reserve. And the Ravens, they used the seventh one was on Devin DuVernay. Number eight is on Mark Andrews. So this is it. This is it. This is the team. This is the squad, at least for people who are on IR. Nobody else is coming back. But with the Baltimore Ravens, this is special, man, because – you have Mark Andrews back now. And, but now with Todd Munkin, it's very important for him to find a way to get it done with both of them. Now, we, we should not expect, and I would not expect, Mark Andrews to come in and be, all right, I'm back to being tight end one, right? I, I, I don't think that's reasonable. I mean, I get it because him and Lamar, they obviously got the connection like crazy. It's, it's there already. But depending on his health, depending on how good, and he's obviously good enough because, again, he's clear to practice. You, he, if he wasn't clear to practice, then he wouldn't be clear to practice, but he's back. So, I, I, but I, can't, I still can't expect Mark Andrews to come back and be out there as, as tight end one and whatnot, but I still would expect him to get significant time because it's different for him because he's been out there so much. Isaiah Likely, this was all new for him, him being a consistent starter at the tight end position. You know, I think Mark Andrews got a little bit jealous. He must have got a little bit jealous. Cause he's like, man, I, man, I say like that. Hey, that's my guy. I love him. We in the tight end room together, and, and I love that he's making plays. Ooh, that should have been me. And it has been him for years, but hey, it's different. And, and, but now that Lamar Jackson, um, th this is so big for him too, because he already has the trust factor with Mark Andrews. But you see. 
he has that extreme trust with Isaiah Likely as well. Because we've seen so many times in the past where Mark Andrews will be covered by one guy, by two guys, sometimes even three guys. Lamar will be like, oh, that's Mark Andrews? All right, let me give him a shot because I know that he can make something happen. Now, we remember, I think, was it the Jaguars game or the Chargers game? I think it was the Jaguars. I'm pretty sure it's the Jaguars game where Lamar, he evaded pressure, had a guy all over him, made a miss, had a guy coming at him, and he saw Isaiah Likely. Two defenders on Isaiah Likely. Lamar threw it up. He said, oh, I'm going to give him a shot. And Isaiah Likely said, oh, he giving me a shot? Okay, watch this. The dude jumped like 10, 12 feet in the air, grabbed the ball, came down with it. It looked like it was going to be a pick. But Isaiah Likely said, no, 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 no. Uh, it ain't happening. I got this. So he has emerged, as we've seen, but this is such a, a beautiful thing for the Baltimore Ravens, man. They got their guy back. And, man, Mark Andrews was like, look, there's a Super Bowl run happening in Baltimore, and I'm about to be a part of it. Team Keep It Clean, we got a lot to talk about in this video, so let's get straight into the rest. Team Keep It Clean, we got plenty to talk about in this video. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel like y'all have been and doing like crazy. I appreciate y'all. Let's make our way to 73K. Appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean. Let's keep this thing growing. And also leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. And y'all have been doing that as well, so I appreciate y'all like crazy. We, it's playoff time, baby. And now that Mark Andrews is back, that makes this whole thing that much more exciting. Ravens got some work to do. They got three games. Three games. Get it done, Ravens. Now, um, we got some other news. We're going to get into the good news before we get into the not as good news. But the All-Pro team, the AP, the Associated Press All-Pro team. Because we talked about the NFLPA's All-Pro team. And they voted Lamar Jackson as first team All-Pro. They voted Kyle Hamilton and Roquan Smith. They're like, all right, that's cool. That's from the players, though. And shout out to the players. Those are the votes and, and those are the people whose voices I will always respect the most. I respect everybody's voice, of course, but I will respect them the most because they're out there on the field with each other. They're out there on the field going against each other. But now, Associated Press, so the guys in the suits, who did they feel were, were the all pros this year? And specifically, who did they feel from the Baltimore Ravens? First off, Lamar Jackson, first team all pro. He got 45 out of 50 votes. 45 out of 50. They said... Two went to Dak Prescott, um, one went to Josh Allen, and I, I forgot who the uh, who who the other two went to. But and, and I ain't I ain't trying to try nobody. Or, or this, oh, maybe it's Brock Purdy. I think it was Brock Purdy. He, I think he got two. So yeah, Lamar got forty five. Brock Purdy got two. Dak Prescott got two, and Josh Allen got one. So Lamar literally ran away with it. Literally ran away with first team All Pro. Just five votes were amongst three other quarterbacks. That says a lot. That says a whole lot about how people are really respecting Lamar Jackson's game and realizing like, hey, again, the numbers ain't the prettiest. They're not. The passing yards ain't the prettiest. The passing touchdowns, they're not the prettiest. He doesn't have the sexiest numbers in the world. And we cannot ignore the rushing yards either because that's a big part uh, of their game too. But people are really recognizing, oh, 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 oh Lamar Jackson, oh, yeah, that guy is very special. And he is an envy. And I mean, he got all pro from the NFLPA, got a, a official all pro from the AP. That second MVP is just, it's, it's like we, we know it's on the way. It's just like we're going through the formalities and just waiting on the official announcement any day now. So shout out to Lamar Jackson for getting that. Now, uh, that wasn't it for the Baltimore Ravens, the first team all pro team. Uh, because on defense, uh, same people, Roquan Smith, he also got first team all pro. Uh, and so did Kyle Hamilton, which was a, a, a beautiful, which is, excuse me, not was, which is uh, a beautiful thing because we know those players are extremely special uh, at their positions as well. But it, it, you really got to think about it to really appreciate it, to be named all, first team all pro because they're the first team and there's a second team. Both are special now. But to be first team all pro, this literally says that people feel like you are the best in the league at your position. That's high praise right there. The best, not the most popular, not the coolest, not the, no, the best at your position out of so many players that come and go in the league every single year for you to be named first team all pro. 
that says a lot. But it doesn't stop there because the Baltimore Ravens had some guys on the second team. They had, they had some, guys, some guys on the second team all pro list too. Uh, one of them was fullback Pat Ricard. No surprise there. Now the first team fullback was Kyle Juszczyk, another former Baltimore Raven. But uh, the second team all pro was Pat Ricard at fullback. Um, now at linebacker, PQ, Patrick Queen. He made the second team all pro team. So shout out to him. And that's amazing to do. But to have two linebackers be all pros, one on first team, one on second team, that's amazing. And again, that shows how much people respect your body of work. So shout out to Patrick Queen because, again, th another accolade that just makes it that much harder for him to resign with the Baltimore Ravens. And I know uh, we don't want to talk about this too much now, but uh, it, uh, I don't think it's looking good. I, I really don't. But we'll, we'll cross that road uh, when we get there. Uh, uh, another uh, second team all pro interior defensive lineman, Justin Matabike. So shout out, shout out to Matta Beeks uh, for making second team all pro. Now, I, I do feel like the Baltimore Ravens will get it done with him um, because, again, completely different position. Uh, and one of the reasons I don't think they're going to get it done with, with Patrick Queen, they're already paying Roquan Smith. It's not necessarily in their history to pay two linebackers. And I don't foresee a scenario where Patrick Queen takes an extremely less amount than he could get on the open market uh, just to stay with the Baltimore Ravens. I, I would love if he did for selfish reasons, but... I just, no, get your bread, man. Get, get, get your money. I never have a problem with any of these players getting their money. It's, it's their job. It's their job. I hate when people say, oh, no, they're greedy. They're trying to get all the money. It's their job. Do you decline raises at your job? No, of course you don't. So, yeah, let, let these dudes get their bread. So, but it, it was nice to see them, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, first and second uh, all pro guys. Dalvin Cook got a lot of us excited, huh? There's just the thought of Dalvin Cook, just the thought of his ability, just the thought of, no, he not watched. He was just in a bad situation, and now he's in a great one. It got a lot of us hyped, but things could have been a lot different. Things could have been a whole lot different from jump this season because Dalvin Cook, he said that he was actually really close to signing with the Baltimore Ravens in the offseason before he decided to sign with the Jets. So Dalvin Cook could have been here already. And I, I know thinking about it, initially when I thought about it, I was like, ooh, it would have been Dalvin Cook, it would have been J.K. Dalvin, it would have been Gus Edwards, it would have been Justice Hill. But then I thought about it, I was like, hmm, while that would have been nice, I am glad how everything worked out, not injury-wise, but how everything worked out with the Baltimore Ravens. Because there was a lot of close guys that like Derrick Henry, they were close to getting him. But had they gotten a Derrick Henry, had they gotten a Dalvin Cook, then we would have never seen Keaton Mitchell. We would have never seen him. He probably would have been stashed uh, because, remember, he had got hurt in his second preseason game. Uh, so I thought right there, I was like, oh, the Baltimore Ravens, they're going to stash him. But they didn't. They saw, like, this dude is special. And I'm glad they didn't stash him. We're all glad that they didn't stash him. Uh, but had they gotten Dalvin Cook earlier, then I, I don't think there would have been uh, any Keaton Mitchell uh, at all. Uh, now, uh, Dalvin Cook, he talked about um, just wanting to join the Baltimore Ravens, uh, because he said when this door opened up, I was the first to walk in. He said there were other opportunities, but he said this is exactly where he wanted to be. And, and when you think about that, like y you hear a lot of players say that, especially when they get significant contracts and whatnot, when they get big deals from teams, they say, oh, yeah, I always wanted to be here. Like Michael Crabtree, I remember when he first joined the Baltimore Ravens, he was like, oh, I grew up being a Baltimore Ravens fan. I was thinking like, well, yeah, OK, they just paid you twenty one million dollars. That's why you're saying that. But anyway, uh, with Dalvin Cook. The reason I really do believe this from him uh, is because he's on the practice squad. So he, he's not getting a lot of money. He's on the practice squad. And then uh, another reason, too, why I, I could really get him really wanting to be here, because, again, he was just with the Jets. And that whole thing crumbled before it even got started. And Rodgers was done literally on the first drive of the game. So it was over before he even got to get off, before he got to get off the ground. But now you go from literally, literally, literally worst to first like that. Oh, man, yeah, I, I would want to be there, too. So I get it. But then the Florida Raven in me, it really appreciated this part because he said he's close with multiple Ravens, including Zay Flowers and Tyler Huntley, too, man. So shout out uh, to the Florida Ravens coming through once again. Dalvin Cook also said uh, these guys, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, they put in the work. Uh, to be sitting at the number one seed. So for me, just come in and give it everything I got. I laid it all out on the line for these guys. So for me, it's a new breath of air. And it is. It is. 
Because, like, again, like we said, to go from worst to first, to go from his situation where you're not even sniffing the playoffs to be on a bye week with the number one seeded team, oh, yeah, yeah, you're definitely going to appreciate that uh, for sure, man. And he also talked about high energy. Everybody is happy to come to work and be around here. Now, we get it because that, that's how it is. Like, if, especially when you're winning, oh, man, when you're winning, everything is better. Everything is better. Like, look at Rashad Bateman right now. A great example of this. Rashad Bateman, no, his, his targets are low. His catches are low. His yards are low. I'm sure lower than a lot of people anticipated this year. But he talked about it. He said it multiple times. Like, hey, we're winning. We're winning. So it ain't all about targets for me. Our, our team is winning, so I'm good. And, and that's a great attitude to have. It's not an easy attitude to have, especially as a football player, especially as a wide receiver, because your job, your pay, your everything is based off of your targets, your catches, your yards, your touchdowns. That's your money right there. So a lot of receivers, which I would have no problem with because I would get it, they could look at that like, oh, man, I ain't getting, I ain't getting my, my, my catches. This is messing up my money. And when you mess with people's money, oh, that could set people off, which I get. But Rashad Bateman ain't been on that right now. He's like, oh, no, the team's winning. Oh, no, yeah, we, we, we good. We good. I'm, I'm straight. So with Dalvin Cook, I get it. But, but another thing, something that um, completely different team, still the birds, but completely different team. It just reminded me of the Baltimore Ravens because A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown, you know Eagles receiver A.J. Brown. They got a, a playoff game this Monday night uh, against the Bucs. Uh, A.J. Brown deleted all his Eagles-related stuff from Instagram. He, he, so, you know, when, when players do that, y'all already know what time it is. They, they tired, they upset, they annoyed, but he deleted all his Eagles stuff from Instagram. Um, and I, I just it, it just reminded me of how happy I am that the Baltimore Ravens, they are doing as well as they are doing and they have a great team camaraderie. They have a great vibe in that locker room. They have great energy in that locker room. And the thing is, they've had that since before the season even started. Y'all remember the clip that was going around uh, with, with Zay Flowers singing the Kodak Black when they were all at that little get-together? Y'all, I know y'all remember that. But that was just one of the many examples that we've seen, really, and really throughout the season, of just how great the energy is right now uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. But you would think, like with Philly, well, Philly, we've heard rumors like, oh, man, they, the energy is bad. They all mad at each other. Da-da-da. We've heard stuff like that. But a lot of times when you hear stuff like that, it's just rumors. You're like, all right, whatever. But then when you see stuff like that, players deleting everything from social media and whatnot. And then I think he deleted his Twitter, too. He's like, oh, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to hear nothing, nothing about this from nobody, so I'm deleting this. Uh, I mean, it could be, you could feel like, oh, he's them deleting Twitter. He's locked in. But what about the whole removing all the Eagle stuff from your Instagram? I like, yeah, uh, I locked in all you. But um, think about that situation. They're in the playoffs. Like, they, they're in the playoffs. So they made it to halfway to where they want to get to get to the Super Bowl. And they got a chance. They're going up against the Bucks, and you know what you got to do. You got to win four games, well, three games, if you want to get to the Super Bowl. But the fact that they are in the playoffs. They got a game in a couple days, and that's going on. That, that, that sounds like the locker room is not in a good position. And, and A.J. Brown, uh, first team All-Pro. That's an All-Pro wide receiver right there. So for him to be going through that right now, it's not a good look. So, again, it just makes me really appreciate Baltimore Ravens' vibe right now. And I hate to end this video on a sadder note, but with the Baltimore Ravens, again, what we talked about with success comes a lot of attention and, and their coaching staff has and coordinators have been getting plenty of attention uh, over the past couple of days alone. Um, yesterday, it was said that uh, both Todd Munkin and Mike McDonald, they both interviewed with the Carolina Panthers. So Panthers are reaching far and wide trying to get somebody. Um, Todd Munkin said uh, he talked about his own interest in him being a, as a head coach. He said, the, he said the bottom line is we have a chance to do something special here. The focus is on our team. So that's nice to hear. That's nice to hear because, yeah, yeah I just really don't want to lose them. I, I really don't. Um, but I definitely feel like Mike McDonald is going. I, I feel like he's going to be out of here. I, I, I do not think he's going to be back with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, while one coaching opportunity that did quickly get erased, well, taken, occupied by uh, Gerard Mayo, um, which is great for the Patriots, uh, youngest head coach, first black head coach for the Patriots, too, so he's making history over there. But um, there's still a lot of other opportunities. And Mike McDonald has continued to be requested and requested and requested and requested and requested. Um, now, I, I, I see that uh, the Falcons, they also requested to interview 
uh, Mike McDonald for their head coaching job. And and Adam Schefter, he listed the teams that have requested Mike McDonald. He said um, the Falcons, the Titans, the Commanders, the Panthers, and Chargers all requested Mike McDonald. Uh, and then Mike McDonald even mentioned how um, he's been having his interviews at night. He's been having his interviews at night after his workday with the Baltimore Ravens is done. Uh, so he's been going on interviews, but obviously doing them through Zoom and whatnot. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I don't think this is going to take away his focus from the team. because I know a lot of people get scared about that, which I, I understand. But I feel like this could make him feel like, oh, you know what? Uh, I've been doing a good job. Uh, let me do even better. Let, let, let me really show these people why I can be a head coach. Um, but he, he also said everybody is focused on the mission uh, in Baltimore. So, yeah, but yeah, I, I think that's a wrap. He also talked about how um, the key to balancing his job and the interest for head coaching uh, openings is compartmentalization. So putting everything in its proper place. Um, so, yeah, man, <laughs> it's, it's, it's scary to think about. It really is, man. Um, because it's like, and again, as it's it's for selfish reasons that we want Mike McDonald to stay. Um, but like, I I just feel like he's gonna end up flapping his wings. Oh, shout out to the Ravens, but he gonna, he gonna end up flapping his wings somewhere else. Um, so again, another reason, and possibly Todd Munkin too, possibly Todd Munkin too. But just a, a, another reason why I feel like uh, this year they gotta get it. This year they got to make it happen This year they need to get the job done Because Yeah man It's uh, this team The, the personnel the, the coaching staff ever, It's going to look so much different And again you can say that about any team Any year Because there's a lot of changes that happen every Annually Every single year But with this team right here That they have right now Especially with the opportunity that they have And it's, so, it's right there It's so close just three games, three games, you got to make it happen.